this truly cosmopolitan city was founded by its hardworking merchants and traders. It went on to become a political city, a royal city, and a religious city. The average local speaks at least three languages, and it is known around the world for its fine chocolates. It is time to get curious about Brussels. We are in the heart of Brussels, or Bruxelles, in La Grande Place. Uh, very grand, very grand today, but it didn't always look this way. How did this area start? It's always been a big part of Brussels history. This, uh, you know, square started to appear actually as a marketplace, because you said this is La Grande Place. That's the name in French, one of the two official languages in Brussels today. Originally, the language here is Flemish, or form of Dutch, and in Dutch it's Grote Markt. And oh, market, yeah. yeah. It's a big market, because yeah. originally this was a popular marketplace. No gold at all, not this place. I was place going to yeah. say, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a little gilded for a regular, you know, farmer's market, what we would exactly. think of. Exactly, okay. like even that building over there, uh, in Flemish, they still call it after its original function, Het Broodhuis, the bread house. So they used to sell, you know, bread there. Now it's the museum of the city of Brussels. So all the street names and also name of buildings refer to the, all the functions of them. And that humble history lives on in these grand buildings today especially these glorious buildings. They are narrow, usually only four or five stories tall, with beautiful ornamentation at the top, and plenty of gold. These are the buildings that built Brussels, the all-important guild halls. Unlike some other major European cities, it wasn't the monarchy or the church that built the town. Here it was the merchants, and these are the merchants' palaces of sorts, the guild halls.